describing an animal with a rather unfortunate problem. It looks like something nasty you'd wipe off the bottom of your shoe. Meet the sea cucumber. A cousin of the starfish, this shapeless sausage is an underwater vacuum cleaner that sucks up everything from droppings to dead bodies. Every year it can filter more than 250 pounds of organic waste. Most humans think it's pretty disgusting, but not the animals swimming in to number five in the countdown, the pearlfish. Just like the Komodo dragon and the Tuatara, this tiny eel-like fish is a freeloader that shares a residence with another animal. Only the pearlfish chooses some of the strangest accommodation in the world. When it first finds a sea cucumber, it appears to smell the length of its body. Scientists have speculated that it seems to be listening, trying to hear what's going on inside the cucumber. Then it makes its way to the back door and gently knocks at the entrance. The pearlfish is number five in the countdown because it makes itself right at home inside the intestines of the sea cucumber. But if you think that's strange, don't forget that the sea cucumber is not the only animal with a gut full of freeloaders. It's been estimated that while your body is made up of about 10 trillion cells, there are probably 10 times that many microorganisms living inside your digestive system. There are about 500 species of bacteria in your large intestine. We keep them nice and warm and provide them with a constant supply of food. Freeloaders earn their keep by breaking down fiber, producing vitamins, and preventing the growth of harmful species. And while most people don't know that they're full of bacteria, they'd know all about it if a pearlfish decided to take up residence in their digestive system. Very little is known about what the pearlfish actually does inside the sea cucumber. Some species will pop out to feed, while others seem partial to nibbling at the cucumber's intestines. However, the pearlfish doesn't seem to cause any serious damage. It spends most of its life within this strange but smelly sanctuary which is why the pearlfish has slid into number five in the countdown. Number four. No countdown of extreme freeloaders would be complete without the flea. It's an expert at locating mammals sucking their blood. However, a very different furry animal is the target of our next contender. Because there really is only one thing worse than getting a flea in your ear. Especially when you're a moth. ears. They use them to detect the sounds of oncoming predators. Their ears are also home to the animal lurking at number four in the countdown. As this moth sucks up nectar, little does it know that it's about to pick up a hitchhiker. The long tube of its proboscis makes an excellent drinking straw and a boarding gate for a microscopic mite. Mites are eight-legged cousins of spiders, and 
This particular species specializes in setting up home inside the ear of a moth. It crawls through the hairs and scales on the moth's face to examine both ears before choosing one to call home. The first thing it does is to pierce the delicate membrane separating the inner and outer ears, destroying the moth's ability to hear in that ear. Then, just like a flea, it drinks a little blood and settles down to produce a family. The ear mite is number four in the countdown because it eats, sleeps, and breeds inside the head of its host. But it is very considerate. The mites will only ever puncture one ear because a completely deaf moth wouldn't be able to hear an approaching bat. Of course, human hitchhikers are more interested in approaching cars. And to catch the eye of a motorist, they thumb a ride. Well, most people believe that the thumbs up gesture originated back in ancient Rome when the crowd wanted to spare a fallen gladiator. The truth is very different. It now seems that the upright thumb actually represented the sword and the crowd wanted him dead. And instead of giving the thumbs down, they actually hid their thumbs in their clenched fists perhaps symbolically sheathing their swords. Today, real experts in sticking out a thumb are found in Russia. The Moscow Hitchhiking School runs a competition where contestants have to travel more than 60 miles around the city in only 10 hours. One of the organizers says that hitchhiking in Russia requires excellent interpersonal skills and lots of self-confidence. And the good news is that nobody loses an eardrum in the process. At least the poor old moth won't be able to hear that there's a party in its ear. Out of the 80 eggs laid by the original hitchhiker, only about two are male. The rest hatch out as females. The boys quickly mate with all the girls and then die. That means when the moth next touches down to feed, it's only pregnant females that disembark to wait for another ride. And since they're sitting right in the middle of a moth stop, they don't even have to stick out a thumb. So far, we've seen animals that hitch a ride in here. And weird. But things just get weirder when we open up a collection of 30 